Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Amen, amen, amen. I'm going to be sharing with us very quickly this morning on something I have titled Our Advantage. Our Advantage. Genesis chapter 24 and the 27th verse. Genesis 24, 27. Now let me just give you some background to the story and then we'll just read this verse together. Um, the Bible starts Genesis 24 by telling us that God had blessed Abraham in all things. Now, Abraham had been joining with God, enjoying a very, very remarkable relationship with God. And the Bible tells us specifically that Abraham had no son. Um, and when I mean no son, no heir, right? And I'm not talking about Ishmael. I'm talking about a child of promise. But God had told Abraham specifically that through Sarah, he was going to have a child. And um, Abraham believed God, trusted God, and the child came. Now, this child had grown, Isaac, his name was called, and it was time for the child to get married. But Abraham, based on his relationship with God, understood that Isaac could not get married, just get married to anybody. Isaac had to get married to someone that was going to further the cause of the covenant in the lineage of Abraham. So Abraham called his servant, who was very faithful to him and loyal to him, and told the servant that, I want to go to uh, my father's house, my country, and get a wife for my son. Now, that was a very um, difficult task because the servant was supposed to get to a town and not know anybody and be led to pick a wife. I mean, led to pick a wife <laughs> for Abraham's son. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so technically, Abraham was telling the servant that <laughs> my lineage... And the conversations I had had with God, the continuous and the progress, the continuous progress or the continuous um, workings of that, my relationship with God would depend on the choice you are going to make. Now, this servant knew this task was difficult, so he prayed and set out on his way. Now, the Bible tells us very specifically that when the servant got to the town, um, he told God, said, God, I know that you're the only one that can lead me and help me here. So the lady who comes and treats me nicely, I would guess she's the one you're sending to us. And the Bible tells us very specifically that a young lady came in and got to the well, and the servant asked this young lady for water. The young lady gave the servant water. And the young lady now did something extra. Gave the camels that the servants came with water. Now, if you understand some science, you know, I grew up in the north, northern part of Nigeria, and one of the animals you find in that region is an animal called a camel. Now, camels can drink water. I mean, it's said that they drink about 200 liters of water in three minutes. So you can imagine, that's about approximately 53 gallons of water in three minutes. But this lady gave all of them water. So it wasn't one cup of water per camel. <laughs> it was liters and liters and liters. And she ensured all of them had drank water. And the servant said, ah, God, it seems God is speaking here. And the servant spoke to the lady and said, um, I mean, we're strangers here. Do, do you have any lodging in your father's house? And the lady said, sure, I can speak to my father on your behalf. And the servant asked, sorry, which family are you from? And when she mentioned the family, Abraham said, whoa, that is the family I'm supposed to marry um, a, a, a wife for Isaac from. So the servant was excited. Now, verse 27, hear what the servant said. The servant said, he said, blessed be the Lord God of my master, Abraham, who had not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. Now, two very interesting and important words. Mercy and truth. That was what the servant said was responsible for his success. Mercy and what? And truth. Now, 2020 has been declared to us our, as our year of what? Mercy. 
But I've discovered that there are two things, two words that go together in the Bible. Mercy and what? Truth. About 23 times you find the word mercy and truth. Meaning that the season of mercy is also the season of truth. Never forget that. The season of mercy is also the season of truth. They are like a twin. They go together. If you understand mercy, you must understand truth. Because if you understand mercy without understanding truth, you would not have be balanced in operating in the mercy of God. But when you understand the truth of God with the mercy of God, then you are balanced. And balance is a very important thing in the kingdom of God. So mercy and truth, mercy and truth, mercy and truth. All through the conference, we spoke a lot around mercy. I want to talk to us this morning about truth. Now, what is truth? Very simply, I'll let the Bible explain the Bible. John chapter 17, verse 17. The Bible says, sanctify them. And this is Jesus praying. You know, we call a particular prayer our Lord's prayer. I believe this is the Lord's prayer. Because John 17, this was Jesus praying to the Father. It was documented. And in the 17th verse, the Bible tells us that Jesus said, sanctify them with thy truth. He says, for thy word is truth. So when we say truth, we are talking about the word of God. You see, to understand the mercy of God, you must understand the word of God. And I believe that one of the greatest acts of God's mercy to us is by giving us his word. One of his greatest acts of mercy is by giving us his word. Because the season of mercy is also the season of truth. And when we talk about the word of God, I want you to understand that I am not talking about the Bible. Uh, the word of God are the thoughts of God that are consistent with three things. Number one, his person. Number two, his purpose. Number three, his potential. That is the word of God. The thoughts of God, the expression of those thoughts that are consistent with his person. So you can walk into a church and actually hear a good sermon, but not hear the word of God. <laughs> because the word of God is the expression of the thoughts of God that are consistent, number one, with his person. Number two, with his purpose, what he is doing. And number three, with his potential, what God can do. His ability. You see, the word of God is expressed in different ways. Three ways primarily. Number one, we have something we call the living word, which is Jesus himself. Now the Bible says in the book of John chapter 1 verse 14, talking about Jesus, it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Talking about Jesus. He says the word became flesh. So you see, the word of God, Jesus rather, is called the word of God. He's called the living word. In Revelations chapter 19, the Bible calls him the word of God. Praise the Lord. Now we have another expression of the word of God, which is the written word. Which is what you have documented in your Bible. Right? That is the written word. Written word. Then number three, we have the spoken word. We have the living word, the written word, and what? The spoken word. The spoken word is when you put the word of God on your lips in confession, or when God communicates to you, speaks to you about something that you might not necessarily find in the written word, but agrees with the written word. So for example... <laughs> if God is sending you to Jamaica there is no Jamaica in the Bible you would not find anywhere in the Bible where you find the word Jamaica but through the spirit of God you can know that God is leading you to what? Jamaica isn't it? so that is an expression of God's word now one other thing I must tell you is that the word of God 
is the expression of all that God is. And the word of God is reliable and can be depended upon. Now, listen to me. A lot of believers do not actually believe what I just said. They think they do, but they do not really believe it. The word of God is not an option. The word of God is the only way for the believer. The word of God is reliable. The word of God can be depended upon. So you read in the book of John chapter 1, from verse 1 to 5. John chapter 1. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word. That means before anything existed, the word of God existed. Before anything existed, the word existed. He says, and the word was with God, and the word was God. That means when the word of God shows up on the scene, God has shown up. Verse 2, he says, the same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3, he says, all things, somebody say all. All, all things were what? Made by him. You see, it, John gives the word of God personality. He says, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Meaning that with the word of God, you can make anything in your life. Are you listening to me? With the word of God, you can make anything in your life. Because there is nothing that exists that was not made by the word of God. Hebrews 1 verse 3 helps explains to us that the word, the, this whole world is sustained by the word of his power. He upholded the whole world by the word of his power. You see, every single thing, it came out from the word of God. And you must understand that God's word is the maker of all. Meaning the word of God can be trusted. There is nothing you want to experience and nothing you want to become in life that the word of God cannot make you. Hence, you must depend on the word. You must be sold out to the world, word. Then it says in verse 4, he says, in him was life. In the word was Zoe, the very life of God. And that life was the light, the development of man. And verse 5, I like verse 5. Verse 5 says, and light shineth in the darkness. And the dark light that the word of God shines, that kind of light, the devil cannot understand it. Meaning, if your business is built on the word of God, the devil cannot understand the success of that business. If your business is built on the philosophies of men, the devil can understand it. But if your business, your life, your marriage, your health, your finances is built on the word, the devil cannot understand it. And whatever the devil cannot understand, the devil cannot touch. You must understand that. So the word of God is reliable. The word of God is dependable. The word of God can be trusted. Somebody say the word of God can be trusted. Now you see, in Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, now this is Jesus speaking and quoting from Deuteronomy chapter 8. Jesus said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word. Every word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that what? Proceeds from the mouth of God. Meaning that it is wisdom to live your life based on the word of God. You know, in John chapter 16, verse 13, the Bible talking about the person of the Holy Spirit describes the Holy Spirit as the spirit of truth, meaning the spirit of the word. Because one of the primary things the Holy Spirit would do in the life of a believer is to help the believer understand the word of God. Meaning that believers must begin to take the word of God more seriously. There are lots of Christians who do not have a relationship with the word of God. The only time they hear the word of God or they give attention to the word of God is during service like this. And some believers come for service and they are on Facebook, Instagram and everything else, Twitter, during service. <laughs> Go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. 
they've not read anything about the word of God. They say, well, I'm listening to Christian music. Listen to me. Christian music cannot substitute the place of the word of God. You must understand that. Listen, coming to church does not substitute paying attention to God's word. Lots of people are wondering, well, I've been a believer for a long time. Why is my life like this? Well, how much attention are you giving to the word of God? Because you must understand that, and I'm going to get there, that it is by paying attention to God's word that we grow in God. The season of mercy is also the season of truth. The season of mercy is also a season to give attention to God's word like never before. Don't be a stranger to the word of God. Because, now hear this. The Holy Spirit is the communicator of the word of God to us. But there are certain environments in which the Holy Spirit is easily able to communicate the word of God to us. So, for example, one, one environment is when you pick up the written word and you begin to read and study. You are giving the Holy Spirit an opportunity to begin to bring life out of those verses and scriptures to you. And so he's communicating God's word to you. So you can be reading right there. I mean, I can tell you. So, so you are reading Romans chapter 12. You're reading, you read, read verse 1. You read verse 2. And right from Romans chapter 12, that has nothing to do with marriage. God can show you who to get married to. That is the word of God. You see, if you build your life, and, 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 and this is the deception of the devil. I believe it's one of the greatest deceptions of the devil. Greatest deceptions of the devil. You see, someone I read many years ago, maybe about 20 years ago, even more, in, in one of... This dear woman of God's book, Joyce Meyer. She said, there are three zones that the devil is always trying to get people into. Three zones. Never forget this. It says zone number one is the zone of ignorance. The zone where you do not know, right? The zone of ignorance. It says number two is the zone of sin. We, I, I believe we know that. Number three is the zone of extremes. Three zones. Ignorance, sin, and extremes. And she was explaining that one of the ways people operate in the zone of the extreme is by feeling. The devil selling the idea to them that some things do not really matter. Don't worry. That God understands. And you know, we live in a city called Lagos. For those of us who live in Lagos. A very busy city. You're out by 4 a.m. And you're back by 10 p.m. There is always something to do. Very busy city. Never sleeps. And you can get so busy that you get too busy for the word of God. Too busy for the word of God. In one week, your Bible is as new. You bought this Bible five years ago. And honestly, if you take that Bible back to the bookshop, somebody else will buy it. Because it's as new as when you bought it. And you bought it so that you just alleviate the guilt of the fact that I don't have a Bible. At least I have one. Then I think also, our Bibles on our phones is a good thing. This is technology. should help us. But somebody goes to the phone, says, I want to read my Bible. One message comes in. The next 30 minutes, the person is on Facebook. Then, ah, I was supposed to be reading the Bible. Oh, I have to do so. And the person is gone. The whole day, the person, I say, ah, we don't have time. But sorry, you had time to chat with people. You had time to interact with people. You in a day, you responded about 200 WhatsApp messages. You had time to do all of that. You know why? Because a lot of times, believers do not prioritize the word of God. They see the word of God as an option. <laughs> the Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone. This is the words of Jesus, the very words of Jesus. Because you cannot pray effectively if you do not give attention to the word of God. Challenges of life will come and will mess the person up because the person is not giving attention to the word of God. 
Now, there are two things that the Word of God will do, among so many. I just want to pick two that I feel led by the Spirit of God to talk about. Number one, the Word of God will grow you. And number two, the Word of God will guarantee your success. Number one, the Word of God will grow you. Uh, the Word of God will grow you. You must understand that every single human being on the face of the earth, there is a way God sees them. And I'm speaking through the eyes of God now. Right? God does not see people in terms of this person is European, is African. That's not how God sees human beings. God sees human beings in one of three ways. Number one, God sees human beings as either natural people. And this is from the Bible. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul the Apostle communicating the mind of God to us. Speaking, John, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. And he says, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. The natural man is the man who has not accepted Jesus as his or our Lord and personal Savior. That is the natural man. So this person does not receive the things of the Spirit. Because, you, I mean, you are talking to the person, say, I'm going to church. Say, so why are you going to church? Say, so I'm giving tithes. Why are you giving tithes? Meanwhile, this person goes somewhere else to give his or her own tithes. <laughs> Natural man. This person has not accepted Jesus as his or her Lord and personal Savior. So this is the first category of human beings. Now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Chapter 3 rather. Verse 1. I show you the second two categories. He says, Paul speaking, says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. This is another category. Spiritual men. He says, but as unto carnal, this is another category, carnal people, even as unto babes in Christ. So you can see that he's talking about the spiritual and the carnal in relation to their connection with Christ. Meaning that a person who is born again has to grow from carnality to spirituality. So we have the natural man, a man who does not know God does not have a relationship with God. We have the person who is born again, but this person is operating carnally. And what do we mean by carnal? Simply means this person is operating according to their senses. According to what they can see, according to what they can feel, according to what they can taste, according to what they can... That is a carnal person. So this person's life is based on what they can see. So for example, I am shaking. And they say, you say, the Bible says that you are healed. They say, ah, but I'm shaking now. That is a carnal person. Say, whoa, we are rich in Christ. We are rich. We, are, we have abundance of all things. Say, ah, but my bank account is saying 7,000. Ah, is what I can see. Carnality. <laughs> a carnal person lives according to their impulses. Come for prayer meeting. They sit down. Say, ah, this prayer is taking too long. Sister Tutu comes. Says, let's, let's worship God. Let's we say, ah, Sister Tutu. We've been praying for one hour. Shouldn't we rest? Kana. Because they are living according to their senses. How they feel. You see, and the Bible likens that to babes in Christ. Because it's like a natural baby. You know, when you have a child, right? <laughs> The child is crying for attention. Crying for attention. They, they want, let our, all of you, your lives should revolve around me. <laughs> it's part of the signs of carnality. Signs of the signs of carnality. And you know, we, we describe these things, this, we've, we've become, we, we've started to describe this carnal nature in so many nice ways. Say, so that's the way I am, oh. I like attention. <laughs> Uh, see, I'm angry with them. They didn't come to visit me. A carnal person will leave church because somebody annoyed them. They will use less people. Why, why? I don't know. Carnal. And we justify it. I'm a very impatient person. <laughs> so when I get angry, I don't want you to see my anger. <laughs> Carnality. Then he talks about the spiritual being, the spiritual man. 
Okay, you can go to the next verse. You wanted to show us something. First Corinthians 3. It says, For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envy, strife, divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? So this person is born again, spirit-filled, has access to all the possibilities of God, but this person is living like a natural man. Carnal. Then the spiritual, who is a spiritual person? A spiritual person is simply somebody who has submitted to the lordship of the spirit and the word of God in their lives. So they do things not because they are happy to, they don't care about how happy they are to do it. If the word of God says do this, they will do it. They just, they've submitted their lives to the word of God and to the spirit of God. They prioritize the word of God. And it's amazing. Because how do you grow in these stages? The same way you get born again, by the word of God. So after you get born again, the writer of Peter talking to us, 1 Peter 2.2, 2, he says, As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Because it is with the word of God you grow. So you can be born again for 15 years. If you do not interact with the word of God, you will be a babe in Christ. <laughs> You'll be a baby in Christ. If someone gives their lives to Christ and in one year they are investing time in the word of God, that person will grow faster than you. Because in the realm of the spirit, overtaking is permitted. It's what you give attention to that will decide your direction. So, we grow by investing time in the word of God. Don't let the word of God be an option for you. The season of mercy is also the season of truth. The same way you schedule every other thing in your life. Schedule time to spend with God's word. Same way. Same way. And thank God for technology. Thank God for technology. So let's leverage technology. You can be in the car. You don't need to carry a big book. Right on your phone, which is always with us a lot of the times, you can open up and download a version of the Bible you like and study the word. You are giving the Holy Spirit an opportunity to begin to speak with you and communicate his truth to you. The second thing the word of God will do, aside from growing you as a believer, is... Guaranteeing your success. Psalms chapter 1. Psalms chapter 1. You know, a lot of people think that the devil is afraid of the word of God. Mm. The devil is not afraid of the word of God. The devil is afraid of what you do with the word of God you have access to. Okay, Luke chapter 8. The Bible tells us, Jesus speaking and talking about the parable of the sower. Jesus said, verse 11. He says the seed is the word, right? Verses 12, he says, when the word was sown, the devil came. Can, can, we, can you see it? Those that were, by the way, sight are they that hear. Then come the devil and take it away what? Who came to take away what? So it is not necessarily the seed that is the problem. It is the heart that the seed came into. <laughs> so the devil is not necessarily afraid of the word because if you read in Matthew chapter 4, when did God, Jesus quoted scriptures, the devil also quoted scriptures, even though incomplete, but he quoted it anyway. And watched to see what Jesus would do. So the devil is afraid of what we do with the word. Now Psalms 1, verse, Psalms 1 from verse 1, begins to communicate to us God's mind. And he says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. Now, 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 it's interesting that the devil, in, uh, sorry, I mean the writer of Psalms 1, is talking about, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, standeth in the way of sinners, seated in the seat of the scornful. He's talking about who you relate with, isn't it? Right? Then verse 2, he goes, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Now, there must be a connection because he starts verse 2 with but. 
That means this person is not doing this, but the person is doing this. Meaning that sometimes the relationship in our lives can be the problem. So you have people who have become philosophers of men. They are living their lives based on the philosophies. You know, marriage is up, life is up and down. No, Philosophies of men. Philosophies of men. That is that marriage is not a bed of roses. Where did they say that in the world? Philosophies of men. That you see, uh, all this, they are shouting mercy, mercy. By the mercy of God, you experience this. Well, uh, I have to work hard. I have to work hard. If you don't work hard, you won't succeed. <laughs> it depends on which kind of labor you are talking about. Philosophies of men. Some of them are direct. Some of them, they look very subtle. So you go to the Western world. Lots of philosophies of men. Rene. Yes, is the body of a woman. Doesn't it belong to the woman? So if she decides to kill the baby inside, is it wrong? Philosophies of men. Meanwhile, the same person who said that, who say, do not kill any animal. We are preserving this animal. <laughs> Madness. Philosophies of men. Philosophies of men. They sound very intelligent, but they are diametrically opposed to the word of God. Why are you coming to give in church? I believe you, the giving, just go out there, you see people in need. Just be giving people to people in need. Okay? Philosophies of men. They have their place. Giving in church and giving out there, they have their place. Say, who is he? He's a pastor. Pastor, eh? So? Yeah, well, he's a pastor, but he's also a man. If Apostle Selman preaches, he's man. <laughs> Philosophies of men. They didn't listen to the whole message. Philosophies of men. Philosophies of men. I've heard someone come to me, I mean, and this is many years ago, when, you know, HOD was starting out then, and the person looked at me one day and said, ah, he said, um, Joshua, can I advise you? I said, yeah, sure, sure, please advise me. <laughs> and the person said, um, what I'm going to say now might sound funny, but ah, the way you're just following Pastor Shola, about following Pastor Shola, you're following Pastor Shola, I say, hey, what about if things do not, you know, turn out right? That I'm just giving you my advice. Hey, philosophies of men. I ran away from the person. I'm telling you. And it's amazing. Some two, three years ago, the same person came and said, please, can I see Pastor Shola? <laughs> I need him to pray. I said, oh, really? <laughs> philosophies of men. That should be just a man. He's not a man. Yeah, he's a man. I get what you're saying. But sorry, the anointing of God is upon his life. He's called. It makes a difference. His philosophies of men. Go on Facebook. Bishop Oyedepo. Who is he? <laughs> philosophies of men. Philosophies of men. So he says here. He says the person has chosen not to walk according to the philosophies of men by reason of their relationships. But verse 2. But this person's delight, brothers and sisters, is your delight in the law of the Lord. This person, you know when they say you delight in something, you are excited about it. Are you excited about the word of God? <laughs> you see, here they call the word of God the law of the Lord. Because the word of God makes life predictable. It is a law. <laughs> if you operate it, the result is predictable. The same way if I jump from where I am now, I'm going in one direction, except the Spirit of God is at work right now. <laughs> it is a law. Makes life predictable. You get into an aircraft, and while you are wondering, hey, how would this massive object take off? The pilot is not bothered. The pilot just gets in, sits down in the cockpit, just wait. The pilot knows that there are certain laws. I operate these laws, no matter how big this thing is, it will fly. Law. He calls the word of God the law of the Lord. Do you delight in the word of God? Have you seen the word of God as a law in your life? He says, and in that law, that he meditates. People will do all things, all other things than do this. Meditate. Day and night. Day and night. 
doing this daily. Now, the word day there, not to go into Hebrew, Greek, and all of that, but the word day there actually means daily. So it's something this person does daily. Someone said that great people do consistently what people who are not great do occasionally. So this person does this daily. And then the word night there means in times of adversity. That means regardless of what comes, the word of God is your final answer. Not a doctor can give you a report. The question would be, whose report would you believe? So they are doing their work, and we thank God for their work, right? But that is a report. But God's word is also another report. Whose report would you believe? In very simple terms, what I just said now is faith. Whose report would you believe and act on? He says, that meditate day and night. Now, it's interesting that he does not say that in the law of the Lord does he read day and night. But meditate. But to meditate on something, you must know it. So, invariably, we must spend time in the word of God. You must not be the kind of Christian that just is once in a week. Once in two weeks. It's only when you come to church. Ah, okay, ah. See, as I said earlier, being a worker in church does not substitute for time spent in the word. As a matter of fact, even being a pastor, you can be a pastor and be too busy serving people, helping people, and you do not have time for the word of God. That's one thing I learned from Pastor Shala, I'm telling you. Regardless of how, so a lot of times while ministering here, he's told us, I left church 3 a.m. What is he doing? He's praying and studying the word. And that's why the man's life is just going forward and the way it is. Why? Because he understands that, you see, the very reason why you were called can be the very reason why God will say, oh yeah, okay, I will substitute you. You are not spending time with me. Spending time in the world is not an option. And God is not a comedian. Right? He's not a trickster. He's serious. What would happen to this person? Verse 3. He says, this person shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Do you notice that the word rivers there is in plural? That means this person will have multiple supplies. Everything is coming to this person from every direction. He says that bring it forth his fruit in his season. So when it is time for the person to get this result, it comes. His time, it comes. He says, his leaf also shall not wither. This person will be green. Regardless of the situation. And I like this part. Whatsoever the person does. <laughs> shall prosper. Anything the person does. Will prosper. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua 1 8. The Bible says. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt do what? Meditate. Therein. You see it again? Day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, what would happen? And then thou shalt have good success. So you can see that God has been merciful to us enough to place our success and prosperity in our hands. It is no longer his responsibility. <laughs> it is now whose responsibility? Our responsibility. Wow, what expression of mercy. You know, they usually say that it is better to teach a person how to catch fish than to catch fish for a person, isn't it? All right. This is God teaching you to catch fish. <laughs> he has just placed the resource around you that you want to succeed. I want you to prosper. I want you to succeed in life. But you know what? This is the ingredient. Take. What are you doing with it? Are you paying and giving attention to the word of God? Are you giving attention to the word of God? You know, yesterday at the workers meeting, Pastor Abby was telling us about when HOD started. And you know, as he was speaking, I remember that, wow, that's true. There was actually a time we used to have service and rats would come on fellowship with us. 
And they will come for service too. Those rats are very bold. They will come for service. The ones that are alive will come. The ones that are dead will die in the AC. So when we put on the AC, we hear cold rats, dead rat smell during service. You know, I, and I used to joke about that. <laughs> we were using a particular place called Stairs at that time, where I, I think Tony Street, that's cold stone there now, right? And it's amazing that we walk into service and the portion we're using as the stage or the altar or the podium, whatever you want to call it, where whoever was preaching or whoever was addressing the congregation would stand, right? That place behind it was the door to the toilet. So if you want to use the toilet, you will pass the preacher and go and use the toilet. Depending on how long you stayed there, we know what you went to do. <laughs> and so you have people come out of, <laughs> come out, and they are looking at everybody. Everybody just take their face, you know, and the preacher would continue. Depending on what you want to do there, you see, when you see the preacher moving away from that axis, there's something happened behind. <laughs> it's not the spirit moving the preacher. <laughs> it's wisdom. <laughs> But I mean, it's amazing. And while during service, I think in between service, the guys will come and start frying chicken because, I mean, they have to sell after service. So there will be smoke. It's not the glory of the Lord, trust me. <laughs> it's smoke from the fried chicken that will come into service mixed with dead rat smell from the, you know. And so you leave service full, full of different things, <laughs> full of smell. <laughs> you say, ah! Did you just go to an uh, eatery? <laughs> <Say, yeah. laughs> you are full. We are not always hungry after service. <laughs> That's why if you are a worker, a leader, one of the things that happens is Sunday morning, I think you eat your first meal. It's always in the afternoon. We got used to it from then because we leave service full. So even after we left stairs, we didn't know we left stairs. <laughs> We've gotten used to it. <laughs> but it's amazing. But see how far God has brought us. Right? And it's still taking us somewhere great. But you know, everything is by the word. Because at that time, pastor was already talking about this time. When stairs, he was already talking about this time. And in fact, there are some things still in the future he was already talking, he's been talking about it. Those things can only be produced by the word of God. Brothers and sisters, base your life on the word of God it would make you a success. You know, as I close, Romans chapter 3, I said we're talking about our advantage, right? Romans chapter 3, verse 1, says, what advantage then at the Jews? Now, if you read chapter 2, the last two verses, you'd understand that what he means here by Jews, he's not talking about the natural Jew, but he's talking about a Christian, Right? So what, you can read it this way, what advantage at the Christian or the believer? Or what profit is there of circumcision? It's not also talking about physical circumcision, but circumcision of the heart, which is actually the new, the new birth experience. Verse 2, he says, much in every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles. That's the word of God. That is the differentiating factor. That is our advantage. That unto us has been given the word of God. With the word of God in our lives, we can become anything we want to be. We can become anything that God says about us. You see, with the word of God in our we can frame and create our world. So you understand why Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 says that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Meaning that... The word of God was the one that created this whole universe. With the stars, the moon, everything. The word of God. How much more creating things in your life? The word of God can create. He says all things were made by him. Without him was nothing made that was made. Brothers and sisters, I bring you good news. The mercy of God has provided the word of God to us. Meditate on the word. Don't be a stranger to the word of God. Interact with the word. Pick the word, meditate, think about it, ponder on it. And put the word of God in your mouth. 
Let the word of God be your final authority. Not what the facts of life are saying. The facts can say anything, but the word of God is the truth. The word of God is reality behind appearance. The word of God is the truth. The word of God is not a truth. The word of God is the truth. It is not optional. It is the truth. It is the most important communication and expression of God to humanity. Embrace the word of God. I want you to shout out very loudly, the word of God is working in me. The word of God is at work in me. I give attention to the word. I give attention to the word. Can you rise up on your feet as we confess this together? I give attention to the word. I'm not a stranger to the word of God. I make up my mind today that I will give attention to the word. Every single day, I'll give attention to the word. The word of God is the final authority in my life. I give attention to the word. I incline my ears to the saints of the word. The word of God governs my life. The word of God rules my life. I meditate on the word of God. I make up my mind that I will think on the word. I will ponder on the word. I will speak the word. And I will do the word. I will do the word. I am a doer of the word. Can you shout it out loud? I am a doer of the word. I am a doer of the word. I am a doer of the word. Is someone excited this morning? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God, praise God, praise God forevermore. Well, I know some of you, you've been very far from the world. That's why you're looking the way you're looking. Don't just pretend, smile, laugh. All right? It's part of the word of God, right? <laughs> but you know, the good thing is that we can actually choose how our life will travel. Yeah? We can actually choose the direction in which our lives will travel. And God has given us everything we need. Such an expression of mercy. Praise the Lord. Thank you for being a part of our broadcast. You know, we never like to end without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Coming into Christ is beyond joining a church, is beyond a religion. It is joining God's family. And that is done when you believe in Christ Jesus. So I just want to lead you right away now. If you, are, if you want to give your heart to Christ, just say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died and rose again and that you paid for my sins. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior and from today I belong to you. If you have said those words, will be late, you are born again, you are part of God's family right now, you can go ahead and rejoice about it. And if you want to contact us, just check the address is written on the screen. God bless you. We love you. Stay blessed.